Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. Today, we are looking at the Altar of Rights, and we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough as to how I'm planning to go through the tree uh, on PTR. In particular, how I'm planning to go through the tree on season launch. There are a couple of interesting big decisions. Basically, unlock powers as we go, uh, and we can't really get access to the full tree in the opening weekend um, unless we decide not to take the challenge of back. We'll get into that uh, in a second. So this is going to be my playthrough. I'm going to talk through why I've picked the nodes that I've picked. Uh, we're going to talk potentially about some others that you could choose. Before we do jump into it though, welcome to anybody who's new. Thumbs up always brightens my day. And as always guys, uh, yeah, subscribe if you are interested in Diablo 3 stuff. Um, now the bottleneck for this system which is basically unlocking the nodes as you go, is going to be node 15 because it requires a challenged rift cache. So either the choice is at the start of the season, you can not use your challenged rift cache for leveling, uh, which puts you at a major disadvantage. So the only way you would probably really do that is if you were grouping and somebody else in the, in the group was willing to do the challenged rift cache and would carry the other members. If you're a solo player, um, you can avoid it if you want save the challenge of cash for here uh, but you're going to really hamper yourself uh, i think for leveling so if we work on the basis that we can get 14 of these things done before the challenge rift resets on monday uh, then that's really i guess where the focus uh, of this will be so grabbing our little paint tool uh, we have to of course take number one of a which is our kill streak time and duration rewards are doubled so as we level in the Temple of the Firstborn, which is where uh, most people should be leveling, this means that it's going to be easier to keep up those kill streaks because the timer is going to be doubled. Um, I think that means the timer to chain the kills together and the rewards are doubled, so that's going to be double XP from there. Now, if we go back to look at the cost uh, very quickly, 10 reusable parts of the first node, you'll have that in a challenge rift bag if you open it, uh, and if you don't, it should be fairly easy to find. The next one is one flawless diamond, some arcane dust, and some re parts. Third one, you won't be able to get to level 70 because you can't get greater if keys until level 70. So we can only pick two. So we've got a choice. B, pool of reflection lasts the entire season and are not removed by death. So I think this works out about 40% extra XP for you know the entirety of the season. And then C is items have no level requirement. So if you're going to use your challenge of back to level, you'll be able to craft a bunch of level 70 items. You'll still be able to do your upgrade in the cube and have a level 70 um, legendary item. It will have no level requirement. You'll be able to use it the whole way. Uh, you'll be able to deck yourself out with 70 gear and probably crush stuff uh, at T6 for the entirety of your leveling. So opening your challenge of cash uh, is pretty much like deleting the leveling process. I reckon most players will be there in like half an hour. And depending on which class and the other bits and bobs, but it should be the easiest season ever to level. So I think that is probably where you would go for node number two. Um, if you're not going to go the challenge rift cash road and you want to get all of this done, let's say in the opening weekend, um, you probably want to pick the uh, all one for number two. So you get the extra XP. Uh, I think it is worthwhile coming back and getting that for number three because 40% XP pile uh, paragon onto your character uh, onto your character uh, which is just going to make life a lot easier we'll be flying through the paragon level so i'll be coming up picking that one up next so that is a b and c uh, are all done uh, next we're then going to have a choice between f or g because we have to get to h uh, we could go d or e i suppose but if we look at them d is a flat 200 damage that is decent but it's not massively impactful uh, it's not like season defining e 25 percent missile damage reduction whilst that's handy for spear chuckers i don't think it's worth taking in the opening weekend uh, and then f you've got 25 percent extra move speed really handy early on but as soon as you start finding move speed items move speed abilities i think it does drop off uh, and then g you've got elite damage at 15. honestly between these two here i think it's an absolute toss-up you could do move speeds to just get the extra speed farming in. Um, but as I say, I think once you get your Paragon move speed up to 25%, once you find a couple of bits 
uh, for you know move speed items or skills. I think the elite damage is probably handier. So I'd be leaning towards elite damage, um, but absolutely no biggie if you say, well, look, I just want the extra 25% move speed. I'm not waiting until Monday uh, to unlock that one. Then we have to take H, which is the shield based on the health globes that we pick up. So we're going to have this. Um, it stacks five times, so it's a 25% shield if you get it. Uh, obviously with certain classes this will synergize quite well because uh, necro can generate health globes at will so that's kind of nice for the, for the necro um again maybe some implications in group play there uh, with that one but h is probably where we're gonna, gonna go now uh looking at where we want to end up these nodes at the bottom uh, i'm quite interested in this one here zed because that is going to give us double legendary items from kadala that means double ancient items, it means double primal items, uh, and at the start of the season, in the first few days, you're still spending a lot of stuff at Kadala, you're really trying to fill out your build, uh, so this is kind of roughly where we're looking to get to, uh, I think is it's being a particularly important one. So we've got a choice of I, melee damage reduction, that's a bit pants, we don't really need to pick that one up. Uh, J, we've got the highest elemental skill damage increased by 10% so provided you're matching your element to the skill you're using that's just a flat 10% damage uh, and K is another nice one 20% elite damage is pretty impactful so really it's a kind of toss up between those two if we look at N and O so you know do we want to do J do we want to do K well we need to look at the next tier down I think really N is the one where crits will count resource that's potentially impactful depending on uh, you know how you are with resource management and what build you're running O double bounty caches I think is one really want to get uh, so I think the choice is going to be six for J uh, and then seven bounties uh, because that is something that we want to get you know if you think about it at the start of the season even opening weekend you're doing several sets of bounties uh, so to have the double rewards is going to be handy uh, and some of the rewards are going to be used uh, to to buy uh, other stuff uh, P and Q incidentally would be progress orbs are picked up automatically. That's going to be nice to have, but I don't think it's going to be essential for opening weekend. Uh, and reduced elite damage is also not necessarily um, going to be mega impactful, but it's not a bad one to take. I think the way to go here there will be to pick up S as node 8. That will allow you to get to R, it'll allow you to get to T, and you can then uh, have your pick of all these ones at the bottom here. U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so I think we're going to go for S. S is crowd control immunity. Um, until you get your build set up and have perma crowd control immunity, that's going to be handy. If you're playing a necromancer, well, they don't have CC immunity. So that, you know, if you're rocking the bone spear this season, uh, then that could be a good one. For you. So we either go across to R or T, and then down to U, V, or we do W, X, or we do Y, or Z. So. We've got boss damage, 25%. I think that's quite a good one, um, but perhaps not as terribly impactful and needed before Monday. Uh, we've then got X, really nice utility here. The pet's picking stuff up and salvaging it for you. Um, I'm probably going to head over here, though, I think, because I'm going to want to get Kadala up and running ASAP. I'm going to do T9, do Z for number 10, because Kadala is always miserable to me and I just want double legendaries offer and that also puts us in a good position once we do get a primal uh, to unlock potion HC it's going to be the best potion I think because if we look at the potions this third one here when you drink it you gain a random shrine or pylon effect uh, so that could be condi it could be power it could be speed that's going to be pretty handy so again I'm looking to unlock that kind of node pretty early uh, out of the rest of them, I think the next most important one is going to be the extra progress orb, which is V. Head back over here to R with a view to grabbing that. That is 15% damage, which is always handy. That's going to be one rift level for free. Uh, pets picking up DBs is going to be really nice, but I think we go for the extra progress orb first. That is just going to help us out in general. And then we've basically got two choices left. Uh, and yeah, we have to decide where to do them. Now, I'm going to steer clear of the double death breaths because I'm going to farm my key solo. My follower is going to have a sages set on. You don't need quadruple death breath, I don't think, early on. Um, I'm going to say, do you know what? 
I really want my pet to pick these bloody things up for me. So I'm going to pick that. Uh, and by the same token, we're going to leave Y, which is increasing our dodge chance. Go for X, which is pets picking stuff up. Now, it doesn't matter which way around you do that. You can do the, the pets picking up DBs first or pets picking up items. But that's what I'm kind of looking at. I want extra legendary items to get primals to start getting this potion. Uh, I want my pet picking shit up for me because... I've waited several years for this and I just want it as soon as possible. Now, once Monday rolls around and we beat the challenge rift, well, then we can then sacrifice that and we can start mopping up um, these extra bits and bobs. So I would say if I am short on DBs, I would then probably be looking to go here I and then M. If I'm right and I'm not short on those, um, then I think I'm probably just moving to pick up some damage type nodes. So probably starting, I guess, with the percent ones. So we maybe do have to go to I first uh, to get that. But let's slap on the 200 damage for D. I think we go for there first. Then I for 16 uh, and L for 17. Look, get that damage in there. That is D, L and I boxed off. F, I suppose the move speed, if you haven't picked it up already, is going to be quite handy. Uh, again, by absolutely all means, you could pick that up before you want the damage. It depends on how fast your character is um, by Monday. But by opening weekend of the season, you've normally got your T16 build nailed. I'm not sure 25% move speed is, is that much of a big deal. Uh, we can do increased damage against the elites. I think that's going to be pretty handy. So we're going to pick that one up. That will depend actually on how we're doing against bosses. Uh, if the boss is proving the bottleneck on our rifts, I might swap those two round. Uh, but more damage against elites and more damage against bosses is going to be pretty nice. Uh, so what have we got left? We've got P. Progress orbs are picked up, which is convenience. Reduce damage from elites. I think that's actually going to be quite a nice one. 25% reduced damage from elites is going to be super handy. And we'll probably pick that one up there. So that gives us with missile damage reduction left. We've got double DBs left. I'm really not keen on that. Um, critical hits grant resource. You might need it. So by all means, pick this one up if you do. Uh, but other than that, I think we can do with dodge chance next, uh, which is 20. Oh, we've got 21. We've got 20 twice. That should be 21. This will be 22. Uh, so M double DBs. Don't fancy that one. Don't need that one. He, let's go for the convenience for this one. 23 for the automatic pickup. 24 we're going to pick up as E, which is the missile reduction. Finally get the double DBs. Tell you what, let's leave the double DBs to last because as I say, I just really don't think it's necessary. So we'll go for the resource 25 and 26. Now, that's just my kind of thoughts through this. Uh, you will also have to unlock both these potions get uh, AD at the bottom here dump, which is the double primals. Um, but that is my thought on how I would approach unlocking this thing. Again, if, you're, if you've if you got a build and you know specifically there's going to be something that you need, um, you know, maybe you're really struggling with bosses doing your speedruns, you might want to bump this up a little bit um, and you know move the nodes around. But that's kind of how I'd be doing it. Looking at the cost, the next bottleneck, I think, after the Challenge Rift Cash is probably Ancient Hellfire. That's going to be a bit annoying to do uh, because you're going to have multiple Uber runs to get this crafted. Then we've got the Never Ending Questions. That is farmable, I think, in any set dungeon. Uh, Ancient Puzzle Ring, you'll find one of those eventually. You might have to reforge in the cube if you get stuck. Um, again, you just need to keep an eye on having enough bounty mats. That's why it's important to get that bounty mat one locked. Uh, and then after that, uh, I suppose we do have the, the 500 dBs we've got to sacrifice towards this. But I still think you're fine with the follower. Um, I never run out in the season. I, I, I take sages off after a few days, even off my follower. Uh, Whisper of Atonement should be easy. Augmented weapon, you're just going to do the lowest. Staff of Herding is going to be a little bit of a bottleneck. Again, we'll have to refresh ourselves as to the pieces you need. But it is just a bit of farming. It, the, the ingredients do pop out uh, eventually. As I say, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Um, maybe I'm underplaying the Death's Breaths a little bit. 
you find that you're really, really short, uh, you can, you know, move this one up. But given you've got double legendaries from Kadala, uh, I think you should be golden. Right, so that's it, guys. That is my thoughts on how to unlock this tree. Really looking forward to the 31st when we get to actually uh, try it ourselves. Can't see any of this stuff changing. I think we're too, too late in the day with a weak PCR to be muddling about with these figures. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I've been the Filthy Casual. I'll see you again real soon. Take it easy. Peace.